everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, hanging out here in the woods in Western Pennsylvania on this beautiful late June day. And I'm on the hunt for mushrooms. Now, while I'm not on the hunt for any one particular mushroom or choice edible mushroom, what I really want to look for are a few interesting and oddball species. Ones that we're probably going to overlook this time of year. And we might overlook them because of their size, because of their color, or maybe because of their inedibility. But I really want to pay attention to those species today and introduce you to some of those because, and I'm sure you're familiar with the situation, we don't always find our choice edible mushrooms. We go looking for morels and we come up empty handed. We go out looking for black trumpets and we don't always find them. But we don't have to always come up empty handed because there are literally dozens and dozens of other species out there, especially this time of year, that we could put some names to. So that's what I want to do in this video. Scan these woods and look for some interesting species, ones we're really likely to overlook and put some names behind them so that you don't always have to come home empty handed. At least you can put some names behind some of the species that you're finding in mid to late June, if not early July throughout the summer months. So stay tuned, why don't you join me on a little mid to late June summer mushroom hunt. Okay, so I have a great first find, and it's one you might be used to seeing, but in its larger form. So this is a chanterelle, and this chanterelle's down here, the chanterelle's down here, but this is pretty much the full size of this chanterelle species. Notice how small this one is. So this is Cantharellus minor, one of the small chanterelles, or mini chanterelles. And you typically find it late spring through fall, especially in mossy areas associated with oak trees. So minor because it's small, and Cantharellus comes from the word cantharus, which is a large drinking vessel with two handles. And that's because chanterelles are typically vase shaped. This one is not vase shaped though. This one typically looks like your cap and stem mushroom. And on the underside, this is a key identifying characteristic if you're interested in eating any chanterelle, you're not going to see true gills. You see ridges or false gills, but not true gills. This helps to differentiate chanterelles from jack-o'-lanterns, which are toxic mushrooms usually grow in association with wood. They don't grow in mossy areas, they grow in clusters, and they have true gills jack-o'-lanterns do, but the chanterelles, including this minor chanterelle, does not have true gills, it has ridges or false gills. But this is an edible mushroom, I'm probably not going to harvest these to consume because they're so tiny. Most people don't really consume them because of their size. But whenever I see these, I know that the bigger chanterelle species like Cantharellus sibarius or Cantharellus lateridius, those aren't too far behind. So I'm getting really excited for that season, which should be coming up in a week, maybe two weeks. And that will last throughout the rest of the summer through early fall. If you live in eastern North America and you find mossy areas and you find oak trees, you might find Cantharellus minor. And these are mycorrhizal species hooking up symbiotically with these oak trees. So this is definitely a great first find, definitely one that we're really likely to overlook because of its small size. I'm going to put this one down and I'm going to go look for other interesting mushrooms. Alright, so I found the second interesting species. And this one we're really likely to overlook because of its color, because of its size, it's rather small and because it's not edible, so not many people are looking for this mushroom to begin with. And this belongs to the genus Inosopy. Have you ever heard of Inosopy? So Inosopy is a very large genus worldwide. There are hundreds of species, and that genus name, Inosopy, means fibrous head, because many of these Inosopy species have caps that are wooly or silky or velvety in appearance, and this species is no exception right here. So this is a mycorrhizal genus. It forms mycorrhizal symbiotic relationships with various plant and tree species. However, many of these species are toxic, they're poisonous, and so we don't really harvest any of these for the table, and most of these species need a microscope in order to positively identify them. So they're very difficult to identify, and many of them are toxic. And they contain a compound, many of them do, known as muscarin. And muscarin is a parasympathetic nervous system stimulator. It's a toxic alkaloid which can lead to abdominal cramping, to excessive sweating, but in more serious cases, convulsions and even death. And so we don't really harvest dinosophy species unless we're looking to positively identify them. They do drop brown spore prints. If you're looking to identify these species, at least to genus level, look for woolly capped mushrooms that drop a brown spore print and that are growing terrestrially. So they're not really growing in association with wood. You typically find them coming up out of the soil or the leaf litter. Now this one is pretty easy to identify for an Inosophy species because of its color, because of its appearance. So this one is a species with a very long Latin name. So Inosophy taquamenonensis. Inosophy taquamenonensis. So I believe that Latin name has 10 syllables. Inosophy taquamenonensis. 
10 syllables, Anosophy tacomedinensis. Pretty easy to identify because of its black wooly appearance. So the cap is wooly, has scales all over it, and the stem has scales all over it as well. If you look at the underside, the gills are attached, and they're kind of multicolored in a way where you get shades of red, you get shades of brown, you get shades of purple or black, depending on where you're looking at it and when you're looking at it and under what conditions. So if you're looking at it under the sun, it might appear purplish. If you're looking at it in the dark, it might appear blackish. But I'm getting all those colors as I look at this mushroom. So the woolly appearance, a blackish, purplish, brownish, reddish mushroom that drops a brown spore print growing terrestrially and also be taquamenonensis. And you might confuse this for some edible species, maybe Old Man of the Woods, which is a bolete-like mushroom, but Old Man of the Woods, even though it is edible, it contains pores on the underside because it is a bolete-like mushroom. This one has gills, true gills on the underside. Maybe you'd confuse this for black trumpets because black trumpets are typically this color, but black trumpets don't have any gills whatsoever. That one's typically base shape, but you will find that growing out of moss. I'm finding this one growing up out of moss as well. But it also be Tacomenonensis. Look for the black mushroom with scales all over it, and you might positively identify your first Dinosophy species. So definitely an interesting find. Let's continue and see what other oddballs we can find in this forest. So how about this for the third interesting find of the day, third interesting oddball species. This is a really cool find. I'm seeing a lot of this this time of year. And I'm seeing it especially on this hillside. It's all over the place. And it has been rainy, so maybe that has something to do with it. So this is a cup fungus known as the hairy rubber cup, Galliella rufa. And Galliella comes from the French mycologist Marcel Legal, and rufa comes from reddish brown because of the interior color. It's kind of like a tannish brownish reddish color, maybe. And the exterior is a dark brown. It's kind of hairy, so hairy rubber cup. And this belongs to the division or the phylum Ascomycota. So it's not too distantly related from morels because morels belong to that division, Ascomycota, as well. And these fungi are characterized by having their spores develop in a structure known as an ascus. That's where we get the Ascomycota from. And so we call these cup fungi or sac fungi, but the Ascomycota. And this is a saprophytic fungus, the hairy rubber cup. So it's breaking down the stick right here is breaking down plant cell wall compounds like lignin, but also maybe cellulose and hemicellulose as well. Now what's interesting is that there's some medicinal research on this species. So we don't really consider this an edible species. I don't believe it's toxic, but not too many people that I know are eating Galliella rufa. But there's a compound known as Galliella lactone, which has been studied in multiple studies throughout the years. And Galliella lactone has been shown to have anti-cancerous properties against prostate cancer by acting as a STAT3 inhibitor. It's been shown to have anti-tumor properties, anti-HIV properties, and immunomodulatory properties as well. So Galliella lactone derived from Galliella rufa, the hairy rubber cup. So look for a fungus that's kind of lighter inside. It's brownish and it's hairier on the outside. It kind of looks like peanut butter cups all up and down these sticks. It's very common this time of year. So I'm going to put this one down. This is the third interesting find. Take a look around and maybe I'll find one more. So let's go see what else we can find. Okay, so I think I found the fourth interesting species that we'll discuss, and it's really interesting because of some kind of fungal structure that it produces that not a lot of other mushrooms produce. And so I'm seeing the mushrooms, they're kind of dehydrated right here. You can see how tiny these things are. It's very easy to overlook. But you also see a little stringy material on sticks. And so that stringy material leads me to believe that this mushroom is Mycetinus opacus. So Mycetinus opacus was formerly Merasmius, was formerly Merasmielis, was formerly Gymnopis. These are all fungal genera. And this is in the Merasmiaceae family. Maybe you're familiar with another member of the Merasmiaceae family, which is Lentinula idotes, or the shiitake mushroom. So Mycetinus opacus is kind of related to the shiitake mushroom. And you typically find it on sticks either sticks of rhododendrons, eastern hemlock trees, but also oak trees. So there's a lot of oak trees around here, so I'm seeing this. And the reason that I believe that this tiny, tiny, tiny mushroom is Mycetinus opacus is because I'm seeing its rhizomorphs. And rhizomorphs are coarse strands of hyphal tissue, almost like mycelium in a way, on the outside of a substrate. And it's a tubular structure that's responsible for the transport of air, of water, and of solutes. And not all mushrooms produce these. And so that's kind of one of the key identifying characteristics. If you do see this, you might be able to narrow it down to a certain species. Because I'm seeing it connected to this fungal body right here, I want to believe that it's Mycetinus opacus. Now you might be familiar with another rhizomorph producing species, which is the honey mushroom. And if you ever see those black shoestring-like strands all over stumps and logs, those are the rhizomorphs for the honey mushroom, or the armillaria 
mushroom. And so this is another rhizomorph producing species, Mycetinus opacus. Now what's interesting is that this mushroom rehydrates when it's wet and then it dehydrates when it's dry. Rehydrates when it's wet, dehydrates when it's dry, and on and on and on. And this one could have been fresh yesterday and it's dehydrated right now. It just, it can literally happen overnight. But this one will literally blanket forest, especially after a good rainfall. So Mycetinus opaque is an interesting mushroom that you're really likely to overlook. But if you see these little rhizomorph-like strands, it could probably narrow it down to Mycetinus opacus. All right, so I think we'll stop there for today. Four new interesting species, ones that, you know, even me, I'm really likely to just walk right by especially in a couple weeks whenever the chanterelles are out, the black trumpets, the bolets, and other choice edible mushrooms of summer. So I really wanted to pay attention to them today and introduce you to some that, at least here in Pennsylvania and the Northeastern United States, most people are likely to just walk right by. And I'm interested to know, you know, what fascinating finds are you discovering? What fungi are new to you this year? Did you find anything neat? If so, let me know. I'd love to hear all about it. Thanks for watching this video. As always, I truly appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Head on over to learnyourland.com. Sign up for the email newsletter or follow me on social media at learnyourland, both on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again. As always, happy mushroom hunting.